Welcome to the EXP Group, one of the leading providers of business training solutions. Please enjoy this presentation and visit us on the web at www.theexpgroup.com for more information. Hello and welcome to today's ACCA Paper P3 Business Analysis Learning Video by the EXP Group. Now, first of all, remember we are going to be using our express notes for these videos. So please go to our website and download a free copy of these so you can work through them as we go through the videos. We're on chapter six, chapter six of the express notes. What this is talking about is strategic action. And again, I'd just like to spend a couple of moments to to draw your attention to the word cloud that we've got at the start of this chapter. This highlights some of the key important words that we'll be looking at as we go through. So we'll be looking at change, process, people management, knowledge, forces, complex, strategic. So there's quite a lot of these words here and we're going to sort of get a feel for this as we carry on. Okay, first of all, just to give us an overview of what we're going to be looking at within the big picture. Now, this chapter covers a number of techniques involved in the implementation of strategic plans. So we're talking all about implementation, the implementation of strategic plans. To start with, what we're going to look at at the bottom of page 31 our structures. Now this is assumed knowledge from your earlier studies. Now assume knowledge from paper F1. Some of you may have studied it under the old syllabus paper 1.3 but the concept are, concepts are, are the same. So we're talking about corporate structures but what is important here and we put it in the notes is that paper 3 is not about explaining the structures but rather using them to match the appropriate structure with the chosen strategy so you will not be asked just to comment on the actual structure but you want to make sure we can recommend appropriate structures for various strategies okay so there are three main types of structure we've got here we've got functional divisional the matrix structure. Now first of all, you know, functional as the name suggests, this is where the, the structure is based around functions within the business. So the examples here, production, research and development, sales. Okay, these are individual functions and the structure of an organization would be based around these functions. So we'd have production, research and development, and sales. The second one we're going to look at is divisional. Now, divisional based around divisions, and these divisions could be geographic divisions or product divisions. Now, as a reminder, what's the distinction between a division versus a department? Okay, what's the distinction? Easiest way to remember it is divisions tend to cover larger areas, bigger things. So you could have an accounting department or a European division or an Asian division. So divisions tend to be bigger. Matrix, the matrix structure, structure combines both functional and divisional. And this could be where, for example, an individual here reports into two people. One is his know, technical boss, for example, and another one would be his the country manager. So it's reporting into you know the functions, research and development within technical and the division based into his country manager. 
Okay, so again, this uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this should be assumed knowledge. Now, the next thing at the top of page 32 is something called the change kaleidoscope. Change kaleidoscope. Balogun and Hope Haley. Now, um, hopefully you're aware of what a kaleidoscope is. A kaleidoscope is a, a visual object which you, you look through and as you move the outer rings, the image you see would change. And that's the concept that we're trying to talk about here. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, change kaleidoscope as the notes say, it helps management design approaches to change within a company. It contains three rings. First of all, an outer ring. An outer ring relates to the wider strategic choices. So in other words, we're looking at the organizational change context. In what context is change happening? We then look at a middle ring, which looks at more specific areas. So, for example, it will look at time. How much time do we have? What's the scope? Is it a major change? Is it a minor change? Preservation. What do we want to keep? Diversity. What diversity is involved? Capability. What skills and capability do we have? Capacity. What is the capacity for this change? Readiness. How ready are we for this change? And the power. Where does the power actually lie? So, if you imagine these rings, the outer and the middle one, if they're changing, going in different directions like a kaleidoscope does, then what we will have in the middle will be various design choices which will change depending on the context from the outer ring and the issues on the middle ring. So in other words, what Balogun and Hope Haley were saying is, look, with any change issues, we need to look through it like a kaleidoscope. And there will be a different image on it at different times and that will determine what is going to be the best approach. So, almost in conclusion for the change kaleidoscope, we say down here, the kaleidoscope does not create prescriptive choices. It does not tell us what management has to do. Instead, just like a real kaleidoscope changes the image, so the change design mechanisms will change. So what this is saying is quite a, just a sophisticated way of saying it depends. The way of dealing with change is it just depends. Okay, now that finishes today's um, learning video. Tomorrow we'll be carrying on with this chapter and looking at Lewin's change models. So thank you very much for listening and hopefully you'll be back again tomorrow. Thank you.